So will this reverse the so-called brain drain? Actually, forget about students who are already going to college. What about opening up an entire new vista, opportunities for those who never get a chance to make it into college? Here's what Education Minister Kapil Sibyl said on an interview I did with him in January this year on your call. But do you look at the political implications of some of your announcements and after foreign universities bill for one has been a controversial bill, the left has attacked you on it. How it's not controversial at all. I mean, look, it's, it, uh, let me give you the numbers. If 220 million children go to school, and of that 26 million only go to yes. college, so there are 194 million children in India who, if the GER ratio remains the same, will never go to college. Can any country afford that? Okay. Now, what are we going to do about these 220 million children? Aren't we going to give them quality education, right? And do, does the state itself has the wherewithal to give quality education? If we need 500 more universities or 150 more or 300 more universities, who's mm -hmm. going to build them? Can the state afford to build them on its own? So we need to get the private sector. And the private sector includes not only the domestic private sector, it includes also the foreign private sector. Right. Now we're going to regulate that. We're not going to let fly-by-night operators come in. Mm -hmm. We're going to have very quality institutions come into the country. Then look at vocational training. This this country needs uh, is paramedics, this country needs clinicians, this country needs lab assistants, this country needs automobile engineers, of this course. country needs refrigeration engineers, this country needs paralegals. We need all these people and there is no education or vocational system in place to create them. Right. Now what will these people do? So transforming education in India, that's the question we're asking you. Will this revolutionize higher education in India, as the minister says? SMS us India Space Yes or India Space No to 56388. You can also log on to NDTV.com or write to me directly at NDTV.com slash Sonia. Well, joining me now, uh, our special panel. Let me, let me go across first to the skeptic of this panel, Mr. D. Raja of the CPI. Mr. Raja, you've been listening to arguments both by the HRD minister, by academics, on why they feel that this bill is actually a good idea. The minister has said that there will be regulations, fly-by-night operators will not be allowed in, fees will be regulated as well. What is the left actually opposing in this bill? Now, firstly, uh, I have a sore throat and I am running temperature. Since I committed to participate in this debate, I am here. Thank you, sir. I, I listened to uh, various uh, arguments and I listened to Ms. Kapil Sibel uh, on the floor of the House in Parliament also. What UPA2 government is doing is nothing but uh, creating another SZ special education zone meant for the rich and privileged. And there is not going to be any equal access mm -hmm. to the entry into these institutions to the ordinary students, mm -hmm. children of uh, the tiling and uh, poor people. Uh, this is uh, basically our opposition. And it is shameful to hear the HRD minister declaring that we do not have world-class quality institutions. What about IITs? What about IIMs? They are right. not world-class institutions. In what way they are inferior to world-class institutions? I am ashamed, disgusting to hear such comments coming from HRD minister Mr. and Mr. Raja, educationalists, I'm... undermining our own institutions. If well, the minister is sincere, if the government is sincere, yes. let them make equal access to all these institutions. Well, Expert Mr. Raja, I'm just going to, uh, just going to ask IIT. you actually, and I'm sorry to hear you unwell, so I will actually uh, ask you this question, and then if you like, uh, you can actually... Uh, leave because I know you had committed to this and that's why you have come. But just to ask the question that the minister, uh, at least in that interview, didn't exactly say that we shouldn't have more IITs, but he said that the state cannot provide the infrastructure needed to bring in that huge number of children, nearly 200 million school-going children that into is colleges. Exact, that is exactly the point. Mm -hmm. This UPA2 government is no more a welfare state. And this UPA2 government doesn't want to do anything for the Amatmi, but they claim to be a sarkar of Amatmi. What right. is uh, the irony people should understand? Chuba.com